Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating a function at a given point. So we have f of x equals x squared minus 6x plus 1, and we're supposed to evaluate f of 3 plus the square root of 23. Why do we have such a radical? Because this problem allows for two different methods. So I will start with the first one, and let me know what you think. So usually the first method that I use is the most common method that is used. Sometimes can be a little brute forcey, and you know people complain about it. Why do you do it the longer way or something? But there's always something that you can learn from each method. I hope so. Let me know again what you think. So first method is going to be pretty straightforward. I'm going to go ahead and replace x with this input value. So f of 3 plus square root of 23 based on the given is equal to x squared minus 6x plus. So basically this value is going to replace the x's, okay, in all places. So we're going to have to square that number first and then minus 6 times the same number. Oops. That's supposed to be root 23. And finally, add 1. Since 1 is constant, it's unchanged. Okay? And this is what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and expand it as much as we can. So 3 plus root 23, if you remember the formula for a plus b quantity squared, it is a squared plus b squared plus 2ab, at least that's the version I use. And that's it. Of course, we're going to combine like terms. Well, let's go ahead and distribute the next one. That's going to give us minus 18, minus 6 root 23, and now we have a plus 1 at the end. Okay? So what we did was replaced x with 3 plus root 23 on both sides, because that's how you evaluate functions. Okay? Great. Let's go ahead and simplify this, and this is going to give us the result in the simplest form. If you... Simplify this a little bit. You're going to get uh, the square 6 root 23 is going to cancel out. This is 32 minus 19. I mean, not 19, minus 17. Or you can do minus 18 and then plus 1. Same idea. This will be 14 plus 1 is going to be 15. Hmm, that's pretty interesting, don't you think? So we're given a quadratic function like this. And then the answer is not a radical. Why is that happening? Good question. We'll find out with the second method, why this is happening. But basically, this is what we, we've been looking for. f of 3 plus root 23 is equal to 15, and that is the answer. Okay? Cool, cool. Let's go ahead and check uh, out the second method and see if we can get the exact same result, maybe a little easier. Okay, great. So one more time, f of x is given as x squared minus 6x plus 1, and then we are supposed to find f of 3 plus root 23. Obviously, this problem can be changed a little bit without changing the 3, by the way, and you're going to see what, what I'm talking about. But this could be a square root of 1 million, or a square root, well, 1 million, that would be 1,000, you know. But square root of 99999, something like that. Anyways, so... This is what we're looking for. If you plug it in, it's going to be the first method. So we've got to do something different. And here's what we're going to do. Given the fact that we are dealing with the radical here, and looking at the right-hand side, there's something called completing the square. Okay? Let me go ahead and talk about it a little bit, and then I will show you how we can apply it to this scenario. So basically, the completing the square is whenever you have something like x squared plus bx, and by the way, this could be a minus sign as well, you add something to this to make it a perfect square. So our goal is to add something to this, and we want to make it x plus something else squared. And let's go ahead and call this uh, maybe c, okay? So our goal is to make it this. But what are you supposed to add? That's, uh, this is how you find it. You look at the coefficient of x, okay, which is b, or plus minus b, doesn't matter, because we're going to square it eventually. So you cut the b in half, which is half of b, and then you square it, and that gives you this number. So in other words, if you add half of b squared to both sides, the left-hand side becomes a perfect square. But what's the relationship between c and b? Well, when you do this, you're basically looking at this, or with the minus sign, right? 
So this is the same thing as x plus minus half of b quantity squared. If you square this, you're actually going to arrive at the left-hand side. That's cool. So let's go ahead and apply it to our scenario. Let me go ahead and write down the problem one more time. f of x equals x squared minus 6x plus 1. And then I'm supposed to evaluate f of 3 plus root 23. Was that the problem? Let's go ahead and double check. Yep, that's it. Okay, so here's how we're going to apply completing the square to the right-hand side. We have x squared minus 6. But you might be saying, okay, what about the 1? Don't worry, we're going to take care of that. First, think about it this way. What number should I add to this to make the right-hand side a perfect square? And yet that you can find by cutting the 6 in half. Oops, sorry, I'm ahead of myself. Half of 6 squared. That's what you need to add. But that is 3 squared, which is 9. So in other words, you have to add 9 to this to make it a perfect square. And we'll talk about what that turns into next. But you can't just add 9. Of course, you have to subtract it. But then we also had a 1 here. So this part, if you noticed, this part is the same as x squared minus 6x, which is this part, right? So all what we did was added 9 and subtracted 9, and we kept the 1. Make sense? Okay, you could do it differently too, like you could do x squared minus 6x plus 10 minus 9, but that wouldn't be as good. Anyways, so here's what we have now. f of x, now these two will kind of combine. We're going to get x squared minus 6x plus 9 minus 8. Yes, you could write the 1 as 9 minus 8. That's probably easier, maybe. And now this part is a perfect square. And we're going to write it as such. So f of x will be x minus 3 quantity squared minus 8. And you know what? This is awesome. Let me tell you why or show you. Remember, we're looking for f of 3 plus root 23. So when you substitute this number for x here, you get 3 plus root 23 minus 3 and then quantity squared minus 8. Guess what? The threes cancel out and that's the beauty of the second method. So you get f of 3 plus root 23 as root 3 squared, which is, I mean, root 23 squared, which is 23 minus 8. So to keep a long story short, sorry, I kept it too long. f of 3 plus root 23 is equal to 15. And that happens to be the answer. Should we check with the first method? Absolutely. You should always check your work. Yay. We got the same answer. Everybody's happy. Everything is awesome. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out A plus BI, my other channel that focuses on complex number, com numbers, and bye-bye.